Hello, I'm Pastor Steve. Welcome to Victory Harbor. We're so glad you guys joined in with us today. May the Lord bless you. Today's sermon nugget is Flies in the Perfume. A long time ago and far, far away, there was this perfume maker. He was the greatest perfume maker in all the land. And he began to create this perfume, and it was the greatest perfume that he had ever created. It smelled so good, it was so intoxicating, nobody could resist the smell of this perfume. He began to think, I can sell this perfume to the queen, and I'll be set for life. So he was so excited after he had created the perfume, that he began to, to go out and tell all of his friends about his good fortune. Now in those days, the base for all perfumes was olive oil. And olive oil always attracted flies. While he was gone, he forgot to cover up the perfume and flies began to get into the perfume. As he was telling all of his friends all these great things and he went to the queen and he said, I have this most exotic perfume. She says, I want it, I want it. So he went home, he rushed home, he got the perfume, didn't even look at it, and took it to the queen. When she opened the perfume up, there it was. The awful smell, flies everywhere. You can imagine the frustration she had. Can you imagine the fear in the perfume maker's eyes when the king came? Saw what had happened and sentenced him to prison. You see, we when we get saved or a sweet smell that rises up before the Lord. But when we let little flies, sin, get in our life, we become a stink that rises up before Him. We need to keep ourselves out of sin so we can be that sweet savor that rises before the Lord. Today's scripture comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. This is uh, chapter 10, 1 through 3. As dead flies give a perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. The heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. Even as he walks along the road, the fool lacks sense and shows everyone how stupid he is. Like I said earlier, when we first get saved, we're such a sweet smell that's rising up to God. But if we let little sins come in, little flies come in, they begin to hinder us. They begin to affect our Christian life. We must stand guard against that. And we're going to talk about a few people in the Bible that started out real, real good, but they let sin get in their life. Now let's look at Joseph, Jacob's first son. His name was Reuben. Reuben was the firstborn. He's the one that the lineage and the blessing would fall down. He was to be blessed. He was to be the leader of all the tribe of Israel. He was the one that when his brothers threw David, or Joseph in the pit, that he went to set him free. He wanted to set him free. When they sold him into slavery, he was heartbroken. He's the one that wanted to take the place of Benjamin when the cup was found in Benjamin's bag. He was doing the right thing. He was smelling real, real good. Everything good, good for his life. His future was bright. Then he had a, an affair with his dad's wife. He became a stink. He began to smell bad because he let that sin in his life. He no longer smelled good. Let's look at Gideon. Getting in, it's down in this place threshing grain. And the angel of the Lord comes in and says, You mighty man of valor. And Gideon says, Me, I'm the least of my dad's family, and he's the least of all the families. But the Lord caused him to rise up, and with just 300 men, he destroyed all of the enemy. He smelled real good. I mean, he was a sweet smell rising up to God. But then, flies got in the perfume. And he set up idols. Two golden calves and caused the people to worship them. Can you imagine the stink that was coming up before God from Gideon? 
who used to smell so good. And one of the first examples of somebody that started out good and began to stink is Satan himself. He was the second highest in, in, in all of heaven. He was respected by everybody. He had it together. He had everything. But pride and desire to be greater than God took over. And he become a stink. And he's still a stink today. Causing trouble wherever he goes. He wants to spread his stink into everybody's heart. He's nothing but pure evil and he sends sin everywhere. Now let's look at Demas. But Demas is mentioned in three, I believe it's three books of the New Testament. The first one, Paul says, hey, Demas is here with me. He is excited to have this young man with him. And the other book, Demas is here with him. He was a sweet smell rising up before the Lord. But right before the Apostle Paul was executed, Demas is sitting there in a prison and he's thinking, this is not good. This is a depressing place. It stinks in here. It's not good. I, I like Paul, but why am I wasting my life sitting here with Paul? Why am I spending my time here? All the revivals are gone. All the good times are gone. All that ever visits this prison now is gloom and despair. I think I'll leave. The Bible said because he loved the world more than looting the things of God that he left. Can you imagine the stink that he caused? No longer a sweet smell. No longer a good thing. But he let them little flies come in and destroy him. Let's look at Peter. Peter was the one that Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church. He was the leader of the disciples. He was fired up, always doing the right thing. But that night in the garden, he ran. That night in the courtyard, he denied even knowing Jesus. The rooster crowed. He was such a sweet smell. Then he become a stink. But there's hope for you. Even if you have become a stink, there is hope for you just like there was for Peter. Peter is on the seashore. He's standing before Jesus. And he finds forgiveness at the feet of Jesus. And he goes on to preach and preach and thousands and thousands are saved. I thank God that even though we let sin come in our life sometimes, God can set us free. The Word says He's quick to forgive us of our sins if we would confess them. But one of the sweetest smells I know in the Bible was when Mary of Bethany, she's Martha's sister, Lazarus' sister, comes to Jesus and she begins to pour anointing oil upon His feet. And that smell rises up. It's such a blessing. See, when we are saved, we become a sweet smell. But we let little flies get in our life sometimes. We've got to guard that. We've got to cover that perfume that we are. We've got to cover it with prayer. We've got to cover it with the Word of God. We've got to trust Him, have faith, not dabble in sin. What kind of smell are you today? Are you that sweet smell that's coming up? Or have you let flies get in your perfume? Let us pray. Father, I love you and I thank you for every blessing of life. I ask you, Lord, that you would save the lost. God, be merciful unto that one that's closest to falling in the pit. And if any of us, Lord, are letting sin come into our life like a little fly trying to spoil that sweet smell that we have, I ask you, God, to open their eyes, open our eyes. Let us see, God, and let us cover, Lord. Let us cover that precious, precious life that we have with your word and with prayer. I thank you for it, and I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't become a stink, but be a sweet smell that rises up before the Lord. May the Lord bless you this week. Thank you for being in our service.